My name is Mike Betcher. For the past 34 years, my job has given me a front row seat to history. As a war correspondent, it's taken me to some of the worst places on the planet. Everything that I have achieved in my career has come at a high price. It cost me my relationship with my family and my son. I've missed Christmases, birthdays, graduation, <laughs> you name it. So when it was time for me to re-embed with US troops in Afghanistan, my son Carlos decided he was coming, with or without my permission. He said, I need to know why you chose your work over us. As much as I wanted to say no, I realized this could be my last chance to reconnect with my son. So off we went together father and son the only trick was we had to come out of there alive Riding low, carrying yeah. explosives. Yeah. It looks like they attached two different wires to try and make an ID, maybe stretch out the wire so they could get further away from us when they detonate. Gives them a better chance to get away. Hey, ask them what this wire's for right here. I'm just going inside the house. Did you bury it right there? For power, where does it go to? Well, I know, in, I know in his house, I can see that. I meant when it goes in here. Where's it getting the power from? Hey, cool. Cool. Yeah, I don't like that at all. Tell the AMT they need to get to both sides and stop track until we determine whether or not it's an IED. So I got a little bit of movement in the uh, little Fish Ray Valley to the left. And you There's movement There's yeah. three dudes. Do you understand why I'm fucked and I don't want a giant pipe aimed at my truck? What were you saying again? This, they had a RPG rigged as an IED aimed at our gunner's turrets. That waited for us to drive by. Roger, we told him to make sure the air is clear. So you're good looking. Whoa! Son of a bitch! It's just right through us, sir, right here. 
Yeah, the dish came around. Yeah, still warm. Still warm. We got a bunch of these that we were just shot at by the enemy from that hillside. This is a dish around, uh, a little over 12 millimeter diameter round, very deadly when it hits you. Let's get it out! And then watch me. Hey, I'll either go up, left, right, or back. Up higher. Fire away. He's still too low. Oh, nice. Good shot. Uh, one person is injured now. Yeah, one person injured. Injured. One person injured. He's okay, but his legs are okay. They're reporting everything's okay right now. Good. It's not going to be okay. They don't, they don't know what's about to hit him. Roger that. I need to get to the left of that. There's a rat trail on the left side of that. Give me uh, three shots right there for right now, so we're going to walk you right on her. Yeah. Good hit. That'll teach me to shoot at my soldiers. Hey, let's get another shot to work up. Good bombs, good bombs. False bravado involved. They see us, they've been watching us for a while. They're moving in position, they don't think we can harm them. Uh, they just haven't fought us yet. How close were those bullets coming to you? You were close enough to hear the go by, huh? Gunfire buzzes when it's close enough to you. It sounds like a bee passing over your shoulder. And that's when we knew that things were serious. Lutsky was this character who was larger than life. He lived to be out front. I expect these guys to risk their lives to get the mission done. I mean, the mission comes first. I can't ask them to do something I wouldn't do myself. Now, that's not saying that I'm looking for a fight, but I can't sit in the truck and say, hey, I want you to go risk your life. It was a fight to stay alive when you were with Steve Lutsky because he was going to be at that pointy end of the spear. And sure enough, we were. Tag two, tag one, over. They saw three uh, possible insurgents. They want us to head southwest along the ridge. Over. They were using that straight south from that location. Down in those low ranch ridge, they're probably hiding somewhere out there. Behind the, behind the rock line, break. The problem was, the Taliban found us before we found them. Make something from the end of the bridge. Uh, Right there. The problem is, you had no idea where they were flying from. The Soviets called them ghosts, and they were. I mean, you couldn't, they were there, they were somewhere, and they were shooting at us. You couldn't see them. This is probably 
the video, you're not going to show your parents <laughs> and your wife. Yeah. Sniper's firing from this tree line over there. Sniper's firing at us from a tree line just over there. Behind some cover, but not much. Let's go up. If he was alive or not, I wasn't a, a reporter then. I was being a pop. And the one thing I could not let happen was, was to let my son die. Constructions taken so long. At Mountain Side. Fuck, I fucked up. Ambushes along the road are one of many reasons construction has taken so long, with the mountainside providing no cover and insurgents offering no quarter. Alright, what? Any suggestions? We're getting ready to clear that ridge line. Uh, at least one of them got hit. Uh, we saw him go down. So we're gonna check the bullet trails and uh, see if we can find him. AWT has nothing on him right now. First house is that they would bring him to. The guy was wounded. Yeah. Hear any of the shooting? Uh, that might doesn't do the deal that Mungi Jang was a part. Yeah, we heard the fighting. One of them was wounded. So you may have them come down and come to your house for help. I understand, Pashtun Wali, that you're going to help them. Did they come to your house? <laughs> Since you can search uh, the houses. Oh, they already are. They're up there searching right now. What the hell is this? In this house. Well, I know it's a guest house, but that's one reason why I'm kind of concerned about this. There are also with RPGs and PKs on the wall. I, I don't think you're Taliban, but I think you turn the other way when Taliban comes through. We had to arrest the insurgents and tell them they're not welcome here. Because I want your children to be safe. I want you to be safe too. That's going in yours. Hey, Roger. Yeah, we're in Rad at this time. Hey, uh, how you develop the situation for him? So, we need to get you to the south. Go ahead and bypass pass away. Of course. Over. Right, come on, Roger. That'd be six more seconds. Rest me. American convoy is traveling this direction. The other way, civilian vehicles. They slowed down when the convoy passed. So did a suicide bomber, and inside his car, he had 600 pounds of high explosives.
after we realized what happened, we pushed out of the blast zone. I got out of the truck. We realized it was a B-bid. There was a lady off to the side next to a uh, clot, and uh, she was screaming that her kids were dead. I started calling for the medic over the radio, and we just started treating them. Did everything we could. Private Richter, how long you been in the Army? Uh, exactly a year, sir. That was the first actual uh, trauma casualty I'd in my care, sir. Make you mad? <laughs> Most definitely. They were just on the side of the road, just playing, and uh, it didn't need to happen. concerned about saving his leg than getting his name. How's he doing? Doing okay. He's supposed to be going hopefully to the OR today. Going back to the OR today? Uh, I'm very happy that he kept his leg. We go out of our way to make sure people like Sadiq don't get hurt. In the end, does it change Afghanistan? Probably not. But it saved that kid's life. And maybe that kid will change Afghanistan someday. Get well. We'll see you. I got a son, Jake, who's 10 years old. Can you imagine? No. Did it sink into you that you had saved a child's life? It did, but uh, that's, that's why I'm here. That's why all these guys that are out here do what they do is because they just want to help. Afterwards, ground unit came up by and thanked us. That was probably the biggest uh, reward that I've ever had is having the ground unit come by and say thank you. This all-woman crew who put any men I've known to shame. I call it the, you know, the band of sisters and a little brother. Four out of the five members of, the, of this crew are women. Right. You guys don't want to make a big deal about that. No. Why? We just consider ourselves just soldiers like, like everyone else. And to us, it's really not a big deal. The countdown to hugs and kisses. And this is Chloe. Why is she so cute? I'm a mom. I understand how every other mom feels. And if I was in her shoes, that I want those people to help my son or daughter out as much as possible. Kids are the ones that usually give all the good information. Taliban do the same thing from what we've experienced. They usually go tell the kids where they put it in an IED. The kids seem to be the, uh, the best guys to utilize for references. How far down do they think it is? I talked to some kids here on scene. They confirmed Taliban had placed an IED here about uh, 48 hours ago. Uh, we're currently scanning with our balance and EOD. The villagers are the ones that actually came to us and, and the AUP and reported this ID. In my mind, I mean, that's a very positive step. Seems like they're starting to kind of, you know, support the government a little bit more.
are kind of scattered right there. Couldn't imagine it's your favorite job. Uh, I love doing this. Really? Yeah. Why? Because right now, my job is to help protect these guys, make sure they don't get hurt. Found the pressure plate. Pressure plates on both sides, and the power source for each pressure plate. Yep. Wire running off to the side. There's a little hole dug right there with the wire running down into it. It's about 12 to 14 inches in diameter. In this area, we haven't seen charges that big. It does damage too. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty large charge. But uh, we've definitely located uh, one pressure plate at this time. Uh, exploiting with the robot. Frontline trace to the pressure plate. Victor Bravo, seven eight. One niner fight. Holy hell. How much you think was in there? Forty and fifty pounds. I'd say probably closer to the fifty pound range. Tell all the kids that they need to stay away from that area because there still could be some stuff out there. They're doing a lot more patrolling around this area and they'll continue to focus specifically around this area now that we know that uh, the bad guys are putting IDs. My intent is for us to get in there and then get out of there in one piece. Yeah. Well, no, my, my intent is always is also to get out of there in one piece. So. But let's not do anything fucking stupid, huh? We have a mission tonight. From here, past those mountains, into the always dangerous River Valley. I believe in each and every one of you. And I love each and every one of you. You're the most precious resource that America has. Trust in your brothers. Dedicate yourself to America's battalion and our mission. Your measure is not found in how much time you have on this earth. It's what you do with the time that you have. These people have suffered for too long. Change the course of history in Afghanistan. We had marched for days with the Marines. It was summer and it was hot. 130 degrees. Unbelievable. And we did it all carrying more than 80 pounds of gear on our back. We ran out of everything. We ran out of food, ran out of water. Running along this ridge line, this high ground to the right of it. That's been used by the Taliban before. Trying to get the cover. And then we got finally to the location that we were supposed to capture. This could be Gulf Company's new home. They're looking for a headquarters to establish their presence down here. And we're going in to check. It's been eerily quiet. We haven't had a bullet fired at us in over 12 hours. Watch, watch, 
What is this here? This is a uh, nitrate to uh, make IEDs. And this is pure heroin down here, you think? Oh, heroin. I don't know if the DEA guys mess with that. Full prints for uh, SSD. So what do we have here? These are tax receipts. So when the Taliban tax the locals, uh, they're handing out receipts. Walled compounds like this one fill Helmand province, providing valuable cover for Taliban and for Marines. Marines say the objective of this mission was met to plant their presence here and to make a statement to the Taliban that the Marines are not leaving. We knew that we'd accomplished our mission and I was up all night feeding stories back to ABC. I was exhausted. Everyone was. And the Marine commander said, you gotta go another 10 miles. There is a squad that's surrounded. Someone else has to go. And Carlos came to me as I was suiting up and said, Pop, if you do this, you're gonna die. I was just too tired. He said, I'll go, not you. <laughs> it's my son saying he'll go in place of me. And he went and I stayed. Hey, do I got any friends over there? Watch him. Go over about 250 meters. The green tree. Right or left? Uh, I go left of that compound and keep going all the way over. Oh. You got the dude in white turban and keep looking at us? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's definitely not there. All right. Set south, south, west. While movement through the fields and canals is slow, every step the Marines take is one closer to securing peace in Helmand province. Here at Camp Koshte, the work continues. The Marines are now in the position of setting up this base in the heart of this town called Koshte, which was a Taliban stronghold. There's a copper wire, where is it? Oh yes, and it's running up to that compound there. The patrol this morning found an IED. We're walking towards it. They cut the command wire, which is a wire that runs to a device that would trigger the bomb. Hopefully that is the only command wire. Man, you enlisted, you didn't ask for this stuff, did you? Negative. The villagers did not come, the Taliban did not attack. But the question now is, where is the Taliban? Hey, we're being watched. They got us on icon, they're being watching us right now. Hey, we got two people 600 meters away from us moving southeast. I'm like southwest of uh, the compound. We took small arm fire break. Just last night, the platoons of Golf Company 28 Marines were attacked by small arms fire 11 times, uh, resulting in two concussions. It was very lucky that uh, there were no major casualties or no deaths on this march south here. Mike Betcher for Nightline, Camp Koshte, Afghanistan.
What's up? We got the moat. Straight down the road here is where everyone is. Hey, one two's moving! Open it up! All I heard on the radio was that they were in trouble, and he was around it, and there were Taliban all around, and they were taking fire constantly. no idea what was happening. I felt completely helpless. I didn't know what to do. I thought I'd never see my son again. down the smoke they were able to lay down the suppressing fire and they were able to get all the first platoon out of that situation without a single casualty being reunited with carlos after that to see him alive was the best damn thing i've ever seen the best were you scared initially i was scared going into it we heard that there was going to be gunfire directed at us all the way down, and so there was. But after the first few explosions, after the initial contact, after the initial rat-tat-tat of the AK-47s coming at us, uh, the adrenaline almost fades, and you begin to grow, if not numb, then used to it. Carlos grew up real fast, and I was so proud of him. My time is almost over. And now it's Carlos's turn. And I believe my son is going to be a better storyteller than I ever was. It's his turn. We want you to meet two people who are unlike any other. The only team of journalists to embed for one solid year on the front lines with the troops here, and not only that, their father and son. They are Mike and Carlos Betcher. into it, I was just dying. I was just, my whole, it was like the thing where your whole body overheats. And I started to feel like asthmatic, which probably because I smoked too much, but it was just way too much. Yeah, yeah, you gotta see. My joints have a limited shelf life now, so that's why you don't see me hitting the gym. It's because you got Jesus in your yearbook. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> Carlos's time was up, and after everything we'd experienced here, it was going to be tough to watch him go back to the States without me. You wake up every morning facing death, and you cherish every moment you're with the people you're with. And here I was with my son. And ironically, in a war zone, we reconnected. It was worth the risk 
to be a bother again. But I think deep down, as a father, I was relieved that Carlos was headed home. Because I knew where we were going next was one of the worst places you could go in Afghanistan. It was the heart of darkness. Strong Evil 3. This is going to be emotional for Kari Ziraman. We're going to his house. It's going to be pretty upsetting for him. QZR controls the entire northern part of our area of operation. He controls uh, the fighters, the equipment, uh, the training, everything. He, he's our number one target. It's an extremely important mission. And you're going to have a lot of young, inexperienced fighters who want to go to toe-to-toe -to -toe with an American, and they get their ass handed to them because they don't know what they're doing. They just graduated that madrasa. They've been instilled with that bullshit extremist philosophy. They don't know any better. Let them come to you. Let them come to you. We can't just uh, airstrike them. It would do no good to kill him or enemy along with civilians. So we have to go in, put boots on the ground, and root these guys out. As a leader, you have to, as my son calls it, manning up. So that's what, that's what I did. This is going to be the final nail in the coffin against this asshole. He's going down. And his abilities to fight in the future are going to be extremely degraded. You're going to create a lot of good things for the people that don't have the reach of security forces or governance as a result of this. That's all I got. I don't think anybody was necessarily prepared for exactly what it was going to be like, but some of us had the worst mind mentally prepared that way, so we wouldn't have any surprises. After almost dying, why would you want to come back to this hellhole? I think it was a personal thing on a level that, you know, I'm going to let these guys beat me. been through quite a few firefights. I'm not different than anybody else. I wanted to get back, get back in the fight, whether it be sitting in the S3 shop, you know, doing paperwork or, or whatever, I wanted to come back. Three in the morning, and all of us were tense. You know, based off of that, it looked like there was a, a trail that we could have taken ahead. I'm pretty sure it does not exist at all. It was just some trickery the imagery showed. I'm glad we waited until daybreak to actually move because somebody would actually broke their leg or, or worse. really have 16 days left? Yes. Yep, 16. Yeah, his father left two, two months ago to Jalabad, yeah. and uh, he's working as a like, shoe polish. Okay. Ask him what's up with this ANA. They're like, stop, in front of us. Yes, yeah, sir? Take the low trail. Going through the Kalats, uh, you could tell men, men did live there, they just weren't there. And the uh, excuse they gave of that they were uh, day workers until all that, you know, was completely ridiculous. Uh, 
Contact up on the hills, our fucking northwest. That shit sounds like it's right in front of us. Yeah, it is. Get out of here. We have landed in the hornet's nest. This was command and controls for the Taliban right there in that valley. And they were going to make us pay. Allahumma saddi the Ramya. Allahumma saddi the lady. Allahumma saddi the lady. Last transmission was a broad uh, scope that went out on a couple different frequencies for all fighters to attack from all positions and attack the Americans throughout the area of cover. Put some fire on this fucking hill. This is them right here above phase line white. This is us down here at the grid line intersection. Okay. They're right here. They got packs moving up and down this bridge line, generally east of them. Fizzo! Make shit start blowing up! muddy friggin hillside we were surrounded and i thought what's it gonna feel like when a bullet comes through me Building number and a status for the count over. Next three, six, stand by. Oh fuck me. This will be great for the better. Three packs, two targets, two parties. Shoot back. Hey, watch for friendlies. Where's their go over? Go over this fucking line. Right here. Yeah. Hey, give me the fucking round. That gun up. Hi, hi. Get that fucking gun off. That's the window, Gary. Break, 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 break. Over in six, over in three, six. Go ahead, three, six. I have been gridded all the information. They are currently pinned down. And need support, over. Okay, Roger. What's your grid? Yankee Delta, zero, four, nine, or three. Eight, break. Five, four, one, three, zero. I was sitting there on this mountainside hearing the radio calls come in. We need choppers now. These guys are gonna die. Wait, wait. Wolverine 6, Wolverine 3 6. Be advised, 3 4 tells me if we don't get immediate air support, we're gonna have four casualties. Over, Roger. What if we fire now? I need that medevac now. And you knew choppers weren't coming. Situation with the medevac is becoming critical. Telling him, hey, the bird's coming, the bird's coming. Just hang in there, the bird's coming. After a while, you... the person saying it is getting tired and unsure. And a person hearing it is getting tired and unassured. Star cluster? There's no way for us to get to him? No. Okay. It's completely open all the way over that research plot. Oh, 
pull in, turn sideways, and ding, 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 you just get lit up. Made multiple attempts until a bird was, you know, it was damaged so bad it actually had to go and land for immediate maintenance. Fuck! Damn it! Kick of the balls more than anything. As soon as we got him here, we just lost him again. Um, so we had to wait again. It was a very low moment that you knew nothing could get there to you. You were on your own. And it went through everybody's mind that, you know, this might be the day. This, this, this might be the day. You don't know who you are, how far you will go until that moment when you know someone is dying, and if you don't get there, they're going to die and you may die trying to save them and that's what these soldiers did hey tell them tell them what a gun run from fucking west to east run up the spur here it's right here chaga in the lead section had already started moving roughly 20 minutes before it probably took a couple minutes before uh they got ambushed the insurgents that were attacking Sir Eric Chaga realized that they had caught him in a bad spot three alpha three six roger stand by we're gonna have the apaches come in for a AC's down, my men need help. They just clicked into my head. It's like muscle memory. You just run. You just run to them. They're waiting, they're running! Hey, sir! Roger, we're moving down that direction. Yeah, right. You want to move down to that direction this way around these rocks, alright? Alright. Follow me! Let's go! Let's go! In the middle of this battle, Specialist Lenskog, this timid young man, who you wouldn't expect would do anything heroic, runs through a hail of gunfire to try to save his fellow soldiers and another Afghan soldier. I said, let's go. He grabbed his bag and took off running. Didn't ask a single question. He just grabbed his bag and stayed right behind me. I looked back and I saw him grab his his uh, his side. He was our medic. Uh, Linscog was coherent enough to talk to Sizemore and tell him, hey, do this for that guy, do this for that guy. He wanted to do everything he could. He gave us medical advice while he was hit on how to treat him. 
He treated three people in like a matter of 10 minutes. Uh, he was fully alert. He talked up until the point he passed. Uh, actually apologized for not being able to hang on. When he was sitting there bleeding out, he apologized for dying. Go ahead, 3-6. Six, three, six. I have I'll give you more information as I get it. Roger. How do you process that? As a reporter with a camera. You don't. Okay, listen up. We're gonna copy, alright? I got two urgent surgicals. They're at building 130. I can tell by AC, he's on the voice, that uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure he didn't think he was gonna make it out of there. Looked at AC like, AC, this is gonna hurt. At that point, he was like, I don't care. I'll take the pain. I just wanna get out of here. He actually, you know, did us the big AC smile. Couldn't explain in words how I felt after helping them out, having to run down there, all that effort. And, you know, the only thing that I could question myself, which I try not to do, is I could have ran faster, you know. Go, 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 go! Go, man! Get back! Hey, go in the fucking doors! Hey, Chet! Come on, sir! He's right here. Hey. All right, we. Who was with us? Albright. Albright, right here. Albright. So. Two, three, four, five. Hey, where's where's Myers? He, he didn't he didn't make it up. Hey, Myers! Myers! Eagle three <clears throat> got up to our overwatch position. Uh, wasn't wasn't that easy at this time as it has been in other operations. We were just walking down. Uh, Sergeant Burgess is up there with me. He actually had to fix his boot. His uh, shoelace is busted, so we we're just joking around a little bit. About seven layers of hell? Yeah. Right here in Afghanistan. Well, I think we're at about layer four or five now. <laughs> I heard like a couple of Afghanis talking, like really quiet, just a couple of whispers. They were right in the trees above us, and I asked Sergeant Burst, like, we don't have no ANA right next to us, right? And he said no. And as soon as, as soon as he said no, I heard I heard him flip their flip their weapon to fire and start opening up on us. <laughs> Probably the first guy down the hill was um, Doc Jacobs. I'm looking up at the trees. Just, they're literally in the trees firing down at us. What is? What kind of crazy crap is that? Started shooting up in the trees because they're directly above us. 
and it was all pretty much chaos from there. We made a plan to get the hell out of there and, and make sure we radioed it forward to the rest of the element, which we did, and we all got up out of there, and unbeknownst to us, the gun team stayed behind, including Smith, Mark Gonzalez, uh, Jeremy Faulkner. That's when Jeremy was uh, shot and killed. Hey, sir! I heard my buddies saying that they're a hit. I heard the radio go on and I heard someone kind of whimpering. No one told me that there are casualties I knew because of that whimpering. Dusty Feldhaus, he was hit at least five times. Get the fucking hole so they can get in. Get on this shit. Look out. Look out. Hey, stop. He's stop breathing. Stop breathing. We gotta go out there. He's stop breathing. Let's go. Thor Burgess was down with a big hole in his leg. He was apologizing as if, you know, he had something to, to apologize for. Right. No, don't. Yeah, I'm sorry. You know, what are you sorry yeah, for? He sorry. You're a freaking hero. Yep. We love you. Yep. We miss you. What's your kid's name? Our daughter is Micaiah. She turns four next month. Right. My son is Xander. He turns three in January. Cool. You miss him? I do. How much? A lot. They're dying. And they're fighting not for some war on terror. They're fighting for their buddies. What kept you going? The rest of these guys. We all kind of saw it in us to, to, to try to be strong, if not for us, for at least you know, the guy beside us. I stayed there even though I, I, my instinct was to get the hell out of there. And I stayed there for all my guys, my squad, my, my platoon. Stayed there for the bastards. Their sacrifice is not going to be forgotten. Got them hoisted out. And that was that was good. All three of them. Continue getting eye come traffic. We found a bunch of enemy weapons, enemy IDs. So found the radio station. This is the seventh back flight already in the last two hours. Soldiers from those like have been killed and ten wounded in action. But that's it. Right. Probably stopped firing, though. Then in a few little pop up pilots just let us know they're still there. John, what, what are you cooking there, dude? Uh, parada. What, parada? Yeah, parada. 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 Yeah, parada. Parada. Good. God willing, I will get on the bird. Inshallah. 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 Thank you. You want Yeah. Okay. Musa had one whole bread, man. Musa had, we already had his own. Musa had it the whole. As a leader, you're going to put it out of your mind and keep going and keep moving on for the guys so they don't fuck, they don't uh, get all tripped out and stuff. So just keep going. One hit here, and then the other one hit here. You gotta sign it, man. You see the... Right over the heart. Yep, sure was. Sure was. And what is the goat's name, man? The goat's name, Roman. Roman? Yeah, Roman. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is our gift for Captain Mad. <laughs> gotcha, <girl. laughs> 
that in your frame? It is one of your frame. What are you going to name him? Pip. You okay, Pip? Are you? Go back to your mama. You want to go back to your mother? Oh, ooh. first flight. You got it on camera. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> RPG shot at us. You didn't have a problem then, you have a problem with a fucking chicken. Yeah. The chicken flew up here and he just immediately oh, no, like man. rejected. Damn. You can't never talk shit no more. Like I've never seen someone show up that fast in my life. You oh. broke the It was a rough day. For what? How do you think today's gonna go? Hopefully better than what was yesterday. This went on for nine days. Don't put your ass up there on that ridge. Alright? Get them up behind the cover right there. Hey, about that. Start suppressing. Hey, we got 45 seconds to a bomb drop. I've enjoyed it and I've just kept doing it. As long as I can stay healthy and keep doing it, I'm gonna keep doing it. I can't see myself doing anything else. That's the only thing I can see to be decent at. I, uh, even after missing like this? Yeah, even after missing like this. I think that we made a huge difference here, that we reduced the insertion credibility here. Like, we went right in their backyard, went right in their hometown, and, and succeeded. It's hard to tell families that their sacrifice quantifiably made a difference because they're 10,000 miles away and you're trying to explain that to them. And their husband, their father, their son is, is, uh, is not coming home. For those who fall beside them, this is time to reflect on how we can best carry their memory forward and ensure their sacrifices for a greater good, and they will never let their memory fade. It was hard. I knew all of them. And as a task force commander, it's very difficult to, to know that the orders you gave for combat cost us. They gave their life for what they believed in and for their buddies. It's our responsibility to remember their courage, their commitment, and their heroism. Every soldier no slack knows that if that time comes, that the honor and respect that is bestowed on them for their ultimate sacrifice will always be met. Valdorf, roll call! Sergeant Mendez! Hey, Sergeant Major! Sergeant Trekkagos! Hey, Sergeant Major! 
That's a split's cock! Specialist! Jameson! L! Let's go! Lynch Cog was a young guy. You know, who knows what he could have brought to the world. Caring for others as he himself needed urgent care. This is heroism defined. Start first class, Eric Chaga! Start first class, Oprah, Eric Chaga! He was a rock for the platoon. He was the humor. He was always the, the happy guy. He, he always had a smile on his face. These bonds are so close that you're not going to leave somebody out there to get shot or die by themselves. You're going to run out there and help them no matter what. Staff Sergeant Frank Adamski! Staff Sergeant Frank E. Adamski! Sergeant Dempsey was a husband, a father, a squad leader, and my best friend. Staff Sergeant Brian Burgess! Staff Sergeant Brian A. Burgess! The last thing Sergeant Burgess said to me was, uh, where's my chariot? Yeah. He was talking about the medevac bird, yeah. about the 60 that was hovering above us. Where's my chariot? And I said, it's right here. We went through thick and thin together, and though I am sad that he's gone, I will always cherish the memories that I have shared with him. I love you, Mouse. Rest in peace, brother. Is he Jeremy Faulkner? Is he Jeremy P. Faulkner? With such a famous last name, I told him he should live up to it. He gave back to me, and no kidding, he told me, quote, I'm going to make history, sir, not write about it. You'll always be remembered, and you'll always be loved by all the bastards. Rest in peace, brother. It becomes uh, to a point that it gets to be enough. I want the American people to know what they gave their lives for the people back home. Whether those people agree with this war or not, that's what they gave their lives for. Hard! Hard! All these men, his men, dead. He didn't know the camera was rolling. He hung back the whole time. When no one else was around, he walked up and he let the tears of this entire war come out right there. And I can do nothing but cry myself. You sit down and you come to grips with your life. But you have to realize that what you've done is something important. And you hope you've left something behind. We only do this to make a difference. And that's why you constantly keep going back, keep fighting, keep trying to tell these stories. 
Otherwise, my whole life's been for nothing. You know something? It's been for something. It has. Cup up and say America. Yes, I spend quality time with my new family. They're back home. I'm missing. I love you. What kind of message would you want to give Americans about what you've been doing here and on this Fourth of July? I say uh, support the troops. It's, uh, it's pretty tough being out here. We're so blessed with what we have back in the states, and just hope everyone remembers that back home. What's a different perspective on what it means to be American?
of a soul's broken bones have quickly turned to dust. Your chariot away. Your chariot away.